Hi, this is Keith Bertrand. I'm the owner of Good Clean Fun Soaps and Crafts. I've been in business for about 15 years. I started off with a gift of a Fleur de Lis mold and a small block of Mountain Pour soap. I love Fleur de Lis, something about the French and things like that, and perhaps being in Boy Scouts. I quickly found this was an easy and fun craft and bought many, many things to do it with. I like working with Mountain Pour in part because it's very easy. Literally, you take a block of soap, you chop it up, you melt it, you color it, you scent it, you pour it into a mold, you then let it harden, usually like 20 minutes depending on how big the mold is. Then you wrap it and label it and you're done. You don't have to wait weeks like you do with cold process. I generally get a detergent free base that is a little better than most, like the ones I used to start with at Michael's or AC Moore or Joann's. I find that people really enjoy making the soap, and in fact that's mostly what I do, is I teach soap making. I enjoy the working with the students, and they find this to be a very easy craft. In fact, I've never had someone not make soap. Maybe it's because we're starting with soap, but even non-crafty people find this is a fun and easy activity. And one of the other things I like is that you're ending up with something useful. Unfortunately, most of the students find their soaps are too pretty to use, but there's still something they could be using. Perhaps these days when we're running low on other things, we'll have soap. <laughs> I enjoy teaching this at community colleges, my local church. Um, I've taught at youth groups and church groups, uh, people with special needs. It's truly an easy craft, and most people enjoy it. I think they like the creativity. I usually just will give them a little bit of introduction, show them the soap base, show them what it's like melted, demo making a bar or two of soap. Ideally, I'll have one that's already hardened, so I can let them see how it pops out of the mold and let them see what the finished product is like. I find that melt and pour soap gives me a lot of opportunities to, as I like to say, play with light you're starting off with a translucent base, so you can easily vary the level of opacity, op how opaque it is. <laughs> I like adding a little glitter sometimes, a little mica, which gives you a nice shimmery effect. Sometimes I'll add some oxides, because if I'm doing a layering effect, they don't bleed. Sometimes I'll use dyes because they're translucent. Sometimes I've even played with the dyes because I know they bleed, so you can get some interesting effects that way. I, I like marbling this soap. Literally, if you take two containers of melt and pour soap of different colors, pour them in the mold at the same time, they almost swirl themselves and you get some really nice effects very easily. I've done some very different products. Like I made one where I made a big loaf of white soap where I had long tubes of translucent soap that was literally colored with glitter in various shapes, hearts and stars that ran the whole length. When I chopped it up then, you got something that looked similar to stained glass. You could hold it up to light and look through the glitter, getting a little bit of color and some sparkle. I find that this is a very enjoyable craft and it's great to share it.